well, less than a week ago now with Charlie, it was over at the Marine Corps base in Camp Laws that they had to disable a drone that they was piloting over their base. That's not allowed. That's correct. Um, and, and really, thank you so much for taking the time to, uh, you know, to address the issue. And one of the things that, you know, we take those incidents very seriously because, you know, we do a lot of training with the communities. We do a lot of outreach programs. And we just want to make sure that everybody, one, flies safe, right? Safety is number one across the board. Um, but also, because of where we, you know, sit, um, a lot of, there's a lot of military installations. There's an airport right smack in the middle of the island. And so we want to make sure that, you know, everybody's flying uh, in a safe and, and correct way and uh, making sure that everybody's got all their, their permits, uh, license, and all that good stuff. Yeah, what, were you, what was Bella Wings' thoughts when you had heard that that had occurred, they had to disable? Is that the first time that we've seen that? I think that, um, yeah, I think it's the first time that we've seen something so, you know, where they were disabled quick. I mean, we've heard about other uh, incidents uh, that have been put out into the public, but this one was pretty fast. I mean, we heard it the next day, and there was a news story, uh, new story out on that. But, you know, one of the things that when we heard about it, uh, we really, you know, one of the things that uh, automatically kind of comes to mind is, you know, well, there's two things. One is, you know, was, was the pilot not understanding where he was flying, you know, lost uh, communication, flew off? Mm -hmm. um, and number two, obviously, it, you know, was it some type of, um, you know, terrorist, uh, you know, folks that are, you know, not using drones in a, in a good and positive light. And so, you know, those are the two things that we sort of comes to mind right away. Yeah, and you always have to keep safety at top of mind when you're operating these drones out there, I'm sure, throughout the community. A, a lot of regulations, federal regulations that are in place. And we were discussing before the interview, maybe a lot of people also got drones as gifts during the holidays. So this would be a good opportunity to remind them kind of about the do's and don'ts. Absolutely, um, and, and, that, and you're right. I, I think we, we've seen a lot of increase of, of drones out in the community, mm -hmm. and one of the things that we want to make sure is that, you know, the, the dues, you know, obviously if you're flying, the FAA uh, website really has some great information, FAA uh, drone zone. You know, if you really have any questions regarding, um, you know, r restrictions, regulations, they're all, they're all posted there that everybody can follow. But, you know, one of the things that we do right from the get-go and promote is the fact that um, there's actually in March 16th the, the remote ID identification comes into play and that is a digital license plate for every drone uh, above 250 grams. So now uh, the FAA could have eyes on as far as you know seeing who's the owner of the drone, where is it flying and can hone in uh, if they're not flying safely or uh, within restricted areas. So. Uh, the other the other aspect is making sure that uh, the folks that are flying understand uh, what the FA Part 107 license is really all about and right. what it stands for. Um, that is a designated license. You know, it looks similar to a, a manned license, right, for the for the pilots. And the pilot in command needs to have this uh, Part 107 if they're flying for commercial purposes. Mm -hmm. um, and then, obviously, if the other part that came into play was. A program called trust and that is a trust certification is where even as a recreational flyer not commercial you need to go online and take an exam and you can't fail it um, but it, it does give you the certification that you've gone through the uh, the process of getting this uh, and they actually give you a trust certificate that you can print out and you should carry this right so you when you're flying commercially you should always have your license at hand mm -hmm. and and or your trust uh, certification so that if any law enforcement or, or any uh, author FAA author, you know authorization um, that that you have will be you know will be spelled out there. I can, I can only imagine that the person and the military hasn't confirmed this, but I can only imagine they probably were using the drone for personal use. Um, and a, a lot of, so, say for instance, I get a gift or I just purchase a drone and it comes in the mail or I get it at the store and I'm opening it, what's the first thing I should consider as a personal user? As a personal user, the first thing that I would consider is the weight, right? Because there are restrictions based on weight. And so if, if the drone is above a certain weight, which is 250 grams, then it has to be registered with the FAA. Mm -hmm. So understanding that um, you, you register it with the FAA and then Obviously, that gives the FAA the ability to, to understand that you're following it. It has been registered. Um, and then, obviously, the other thing would be you know, what you're going to use it for. Um, so just to ensure that 
uh, you're following the regulations that um, if you're going to make any modifications or add any attachments, uh, there's guidelines you know, behind that as well uh, that the FAA puts out so that you can fly it safely, nothing drops from the sky, everybody's flying safe. But that, that would be the, the first thing that I would do. Look at the weight because that will determine um, whether you're going to register or, or you're not. So if you don't have to, do, do I still have limitations? You do. You do, right? Obviously, um, ignorance is not, you know, and is not an excuse. Okay. And so, one of the things that we also promote is the ability for um, new flyers to actually just take a look uh, on all the restrictions that we have within Guam, um, know where the no-fly zones are, and and periodically check them because you know we do have a lot of military exercises, um, we do have a lot of uh, public events, and at times they will put you know temporary flight restrictions. Mm -hmm. So even though you might have flown it. Uh, last week and you were okay, uh, there could be an update and they could put a TFR for that specific time frame for a week that you didn't know about and now you just violated the rules. It's kind of like for any pilot to follow, right, if they're flying just a, a commercial aircraft or um, a Cessna plane, there's a, uh, restrictions and rules that are always changing that you just have to be mindful of, including weather patterns and the conditions out there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, weather is always you know, it's, it's one of the things that we're always playing against right? mm -hmm. because, you know, even now, you know, with the heavy winds, uh, we always have to take into consideration those factors, right? Uh, the weather patterns are, are really part of what makes every pilot fly safely. Um, and I think that those are the things that you routinely have to kind of update yourself on because uh, understanding how to navigate or how to fly within, you know, uh, if it starts raining all of a sudden, right? What, what are your courses of action when you're flying? And you should have that already preset so that if it does happen, you're, you're automatically, instinctly, you know, bringing the drone down or taking precaution. Heavy winds, you know, if you're flying around buildings or structures and heavy winds, understand the dynamics of what that can cause with your drone. Um, and, and again, it's really, it's the, it's the ability to minimize any type of, of uh, impact or unsafe flying. But even with those understandings, it doesn't mean that piloting a drone for yourself, even if it's just for personal use, it's, it can be fun. Oh, absolutely. And, that, and that's one of the things, that's why we take it so serious, because when we do come across these, uh, these incidents, um, you know, obviously it, it highlights, you know, the, the fact that, you know, the drones are being flown by, you know, the public. And we don't want to super restrict, you know, the areas where they can be flown, because as long as people understand where they can fly them, safely, um, they will be able to get amazing shots, recreational shots, you know, in Tumon Bay, um, and we, even in the other villages as well. A lot, of, a lot of villages are really promoting and putting some great content uh, uh, in social media with, with some of the videos they've put out there. So we don't want to take that away from the folks that are really doing what they're supposed to do and, you know, ut utilizing it for, like you said, a fun, just a fun and exciting way to be yeah. able to capture scenes and, and so on. Good advice there. Is there anything else that the uh, people in the community should know when it comes to piloting a drone or if they're considering getting a drone for a friend or loved one? Yeah, again, um, so obviously uh, the first thing is to uh, understand the, the capabilities of the drone. Mm -hmm. um, obviously there, um, there's different, you know, different cases of what you would use the drone for. So, uh, you know, we, we try to sit down with, with the folks that are going to buy one and see exactly what they're going to use it for so they, they can get the right one because sometimes You'll get it, and it's not uh, it's not what you were intended to use it for. And then, obviously, please check out you know FA uh, drone zone. You know those are a lot of regulations, really good regulations, um, and they'll it'll give you step by step of the process for you to get uh, your drone registered. Mm -hmm. um, it'll also give you step by step on how to look on restricted areas, um, and then all the regulations that you need to safely fly the drone. And they can check you guys down here too at Bella Wings, right? Because they know you also have events and, and uh, workshops for kids. Yep, yeah, we have one going on right now on the weekends right now. Uh, kids uh, as young as six are participating right now. So we have, uh, you know, 10 to 11 students that are going through that, that training. But yes, please, um, you know, you can reach out to us at info at bellawingsaviation.com or you can reach out to us directly. Um, send us an email, uh, check our website. Uh, we're we're going to start actually uh, promoting uh, classes once a month uh, where we can bring in the community where they can they can come in and we'll train them and then they'll get certified um, to take the exam and and then uh, guarantee that they will pass once they go through the training. That's so, a good tip. Yes. I know a lot more and more people are going to want to get their hands on drones as the years progress and as 
the uh, system advances. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, the technology is only advancing. The AI mm -hmm. part of it is unbelievable, and you're going to start seeing a lot more capabilities uh, throughout the different uh, business sectors that they're going to start using drones to, you know, support their their business. And uh, the AI is just unbelievable. And you know, we got to stay with the time. So, we, again, number one is safety, safety, safety. No doubt. Thanks for that, Charlie. Appreciate it. Yep.